Hello there, this is Elizabeth Gravina. Welcome to Sacris, a Brazilian Catholic channel. Our reading today is The Way by Rosa Maria Escrivá. Your mainly character, simple and straightforward, is oppressed when you find yourself entangled in gossip and mischievous talk, which you cannot understand and which you never wish to be involved. Undergo the humiliation that such talk causes you and let the experience teach you greater discretion. When judging other people, why do you put into your criticism the bitterness of your own failures? That critical spirit, I admit that there are no one worthy motives behind it, should not be exercised upon your apostolate, not upon your brothers. I will speak plainly. That critical spirit is a greater hindrance to the supernatural undertaking in which you are all engaged. For a while, you examine the work of the others with the highest possible motives I admit, without there being any reason why you should do so, you are not doing anything constructive, and furthermore, by being negative, you are holding up the progress of all. Then you ask uneasily, that critical spirit which is the keynote my character? Listen, I will set your mind at ease. Take a pen and a sheet of paper. Write down simply, the frankly, ah, and briefly, what is worrying you. Hand the note to the person in change and think no more about it. He has the grace of state. He will file the note or he will throw it into the waste paper basket. And since the motives behind your criticism are not unworthy, since they are of the highest, it is all the same to you. One must compromise. I compromise is a word found only in the vocabulary of those who have no will to fight, the lazy, the cunning, the cowardly, for they consider themselves defeated before they start. My dear man, Though you feel very much a child, and though you are one before God, don't be so simple as to put your brother on the spot before strangers. Chapter 2 Guidance They have the stuff of saints in them. At times you hear this said of some people, apart from the fact that the saints were not made of stuff, to have stuff is not sufficient. A great spirit of obedience to your director and great readiness to respond to grace are essential. For if you don't allow God's grace and your director to do their work, there will never appear the finished sculpture, Christ's image, into which the saintly man is fashioned and the stuff of which we were speaking will be no more than a heap of shapeless matter, if only for the fire, for a good fire, if it was good stuff. Get to know the Holy Spirit, the great stranger, on whom depends your sanctification. Don't forget that you are God's temple. The advocate is in the center of your soul. Listen to him and be docile to his inspirations. Don't hinder the work of the paraclete. Seek union with Christ so as to be purified and fill with him the insults, the spits, and the blows, and the thorns, and the weight of the cross. And the nails staring through your flesh in the agony of a forsaken death and enter through the Lord's open sight 
until you find a sure refuge there in his wounded heart. Here is a safe doctrine that I want you to know. One sound mind is a bad advisor, a poor pilot to steer the soul through the storms and tempests and among the reefs of the interior life. That is why it is the will of God that the command of the ship be entrusted to a master who, with your light and his knowledge, can guide us to a safe harbor. Without an architect, you wouldn't build a good house for your life on earth. How then, without a director, can you hope to build a palace of your sanctification for your eternity in heaven? When a layman sets himself up as an expert on moral, he often goes astray. Laymen can only be disciples. A director, you need one, so that you can give yourself to God and give yourself fully by obedience. A director who understands your apostolate, who knows that God wants who can effectively second the work of the Holy Spirit in your soul without taking you from your place, filling you with peace and teaching you how to make your work fruitful. You think you are quite important. Your studies, your research work, your publications, your social standing, your name, your political activities, the positions you hold, your wealth, your age, you are no longer a child. Just because of all that, you more than others need a director for yourself. Don't hide from your director those insinuations of the enemy. Your victory on taking him into your confidence brings you more grace from God. And moreover, you now have what will help you to keep on conquering your spiritual father's prayers and his gift of counsel. Why are you so reluctant to see yourself and to let your director see you as you really are? You will have won a great battle if you lose that fear of letting yourself be known. A priest, whoever he may be, is always another Christ. Though we well know it, I shall remind you again that a priest is another Christ, and that the Holy Spirit has said, Nolite tangere Christus meus, do not touch my Christs. Presbyter, priest, means literally an elderly man. If old age deserves veneration, think how much more you ought to venerate the priesthood. It shows very little refinement and great lack of respect to make fun of a priest, wherever he is and whatever the pretext. I repeat, to make fun of a priest, no matter what the circumstances, is always at best a sign of coarseness and poor taste. How we should admire sacerdotal purity. It is their treasure. No tyrant can ever wrest this crown from the church. Don't place a priest in peril of losing his dignity. It is a virtue which, without being pompous, he simply must have. How that young cleric a friend of ours, prayed for it. Lord, grant me eight years of dignity. Pray for it, for the holy priesthood, and you will have done a good thing. I cut you to the hearts of here people say that you had spoken badly of those priests, and I am glad that it hurts. For now, I'm sure you have the right spirit. To love God 
and not venerate his priests is not possible. Like the good sons of Noah, throw the mantle of charity over the defects you see in your father, the priest. Without a plan of life, you will never have order. This trying of one's life to a plan, to a timetable, you tell me is so monotonous, and I answer, there is monotony because there is little love. If you don't get up at a fixed time, you will never carry out your plan of life. Virtue without order, strange virtue. When you bring order to your life, your timing will multiply, and then you will be able to give God more glory by working more in His service. Chapter 3 Prayer Actions is worth nothing without prayer. Prayer grows in value with sacrifice. First, prayer, then atonement. In the third place, very much in the third place, action. Prayer is the foundation. Prayer is the foundation of the spiritual edifice. Prayer is so powerful. Lord, teach us to pray. And our Lord replied, When you pray, say, Pater Noster, qui es in chalice, our Father, who are in heaven. What importance we must attach to vocal prayer. Slowly, Consider what you are saying to whom it is being said and by whom. For that hurried talk without time for reflection is just empty noisy. And with Saint Teresa I will tell you that however much you work your lips I do not call it prayer. Your prayer should be liturgical how I would like to see using the psalms and prayers from the Missal rather than private prayers of your own choice. Not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, said our Lord, bread and word, host and prayer, otherwise you will not live a supernatural life. You seek the company of friends who, with their conversation and affection, with their friendship, make the desire of this world more bearable for you. There is nothing wrong with that, although friends sometimes let you down. But how is it you don't frequent daily with greater intensity the company, the conversation of the great friend who never lets you down? Mary chose the better part. We read in the Holy Gospel. There she is, bringing the words of the Master. Apparently idle, she is praying and loving. Then she accompanies Jesus in his preaching through towns and villages. Without prayer, how difficult it is to accompany him. You say you don't know how to pray? Put yourself in the presence of God, and once you have said, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Rest assured that you have begun to do so. You write, to pray is to talk with God. But about what? About what? About Him, about yourself? Joys, sorrows, success and failures, noble ambitions, daily worries, weaknesses, and acts of thanksgiving and petitions love and reparation in a word to get to know him and to get to know yourself to get acquainted et in meditazione mea exadicitinis and in my meditation a fire shall flame out that is why you go to pray 
to become a bonfire, a living flame giving heat and light. So, when you are not able to go on, when you feel that your fire is dying out, if you cannot throw on it to eat, smelling logs, throw on the branches and twigs of short vocal prayers and ejaculations to keep the bonfire burning, and you will not have wasted your time. You are so conscious of your misery that you acknowledge yourself unworthy to be heard by God. But what about the merits of Mary and the wounds of your Lord? And are you not a son of God? Besides, he listens to you, Kwanian Bonus, because he is good, because his mercy endures forever. He has become so small, you see, a child so that you can approach him with confidence. In te Domine, speravi in thee, Lord, have I hoped. And with my human resources, I threw my prayer and my cross into the balance. And my hope was not vain, nor ever will be. Non confunda in eterno. I shall never be disappointed. It is Jesus who speaks. Amen, I say to you. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it just shall be open to you. Pray, in what human venture could you have greater guarantees of success? You don't know what you say to our Lord in your prayer. You can't think of anything, and yet you would like to consult him on many things. Look. Make some notes during the day of whatever you want to consider in the presence of God, and then take these notes with you to pray. Next to the prayer of priests and of dedicated virgins, the prayer most pleasing to God is the prayer of children and that of the sick. When you go to pray, let this be a firm resolution. Don't prolong your prayer because you find consolation in it or shorten it because you find it dry. Don't tell Jesus that you want consolation in prayer. If he gives it to you, thank him. Tell him always that you want perseverance. Hello there, this is Elizabeth Gravina. Welcome to Sacris, a Brazilian Catholic channel. Our reading today is The Way by Rosa Maria Escrivá. Part 3 